Ms. Spencer? Good morning. Uh, so good I'm morning. having some technical difficulties here. I'm so sorry, my computer is completely frozen. And so what I'm, oh, it looks like we're actually getting it to restart. I'm so terribly sorry here, we're having some IT difficulties, so. No worries. There is a snowstorm outside. There actually is. Please take your time. I know there's a few of my students who are still also struggling with some technical issues and trying to log in. Um, well, I'm getting black screen on my Apple computer. So um, we are just gonna have to tune in from my phone, it looks like <laughs> this morning. So I, uh, I'm not an IT expert, so you're just gonna have to forgive me on this. I completely understand. My students have to suffer through me trying to explain computer things also. I don't know what's going on. All right, I think our students are here. Um, again, as we start, for all my students, again, I would, I would politely ask that you have your cameras on during the discussion because it's always nice to see your faces. Plus, you all are so charming in person. It just makes everything go more smoothly. Uh, but if you are not in a position or in a place where you are comfortable having the camera on, I do understand. I just ask that if it's possible that you please try. With that, um, I just wanted to welcome and thank again, Mr. Andrew Jones for being here, Alderwoman Kara Spencer. Thank you guys so much for coming to talk to our students. Um, I can say that I am personally really proud to be a part of this. And I know that my students are excited to hear from community leaders on issues that are important to them. This is the kind of thing that we preach in high school government and in political science is the ability to have discussion without dehumanizing people to you know, be honest without insulting. So I am really thrilled that you guys are here. Um, if there's anything that either of you would like to say first, um, Alderman Spencer, if you'd like to go first, just as an introduction or a hello, or we can dive right into the questions. Sure. Um, I want to say thank you, you know, especially to all the students who are tuning in. And Mr. Pace, your introduction is so spot on. You know, um, as I tuning into social media this morning um, and seeing some really unfortunate uh, non-human approaches to um, to folks in office, not just myself, uh, it really dehumanizes the process. And I think um, one of the things I worry about is um, the killing of the human spirit um, in our, you know, in our, in our broader sense. And, um, you know, it, it certainly um, is a scary thought to think of um, being sort of, uh, de you know, dehumanizing our elected officials. We want humans to be um, in charge. And I want all of our students here today to consider running for public office. And a part of that would be to, 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 to encourage the working with the system. Certainly there are times in which um, it's just not possible. Um, I'll go out on a limb and say our current, our, our former president was one that I, I just couldn't imagine working with, for example. Um, but um, most of the time, uh, it's, it's, it's worth trying to engage with in a, in a constructive way. Um, I'll introduce myself real quickly by saying I'm not your typical candidate for mayor. Um, I'm a single mom. I am raising my son here in South St. Louis. I don't come from a political background. Nobody in my family ever uh, uh, held political office or even obtained a college degree. Um, I put my way through college slinging burgers at a state school, something for which I'm very proud and something I hope that you all um, consider doing yourselves. <clears throat> and. Um, you know, decided to run for office because essentially um, our city had closed our south side free public pool down here. And it really was the thing that uh, many of our families relied on uh, for summer entertainment and healthy activity. Uh, so I ran for office and I won uh, that year and got that pool up and running bef before the summer really hit. So, um, you know, when there's an issue that bugs you or you think is unfair, you know, um, it really can make a difference if you if you if you step out on a limb and and think about tackling that issue. Um, I get as a as a, an official, I get regular communication from students and and people who vote and who don't vote. Um, and it is my responsibility, whether you're of voting age or whether you're of legal voting status, uh, that it is my duty to represent you. 
And it is my duty to represent the interests of all my residents, whether they vote or not. And so I wanted to just leave you with that thought that, um, you know, you, you can reach out to your elected officials and do so knowing that um, it is our responsibility to, um, to, to represent your interests. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Pace, I think that's all I have. I don't have, um, I don't no. have any of my notes because I'm sitting here uh, operating with my phone this morning. No. Um, I, <clears throat> and I wanted to say on the front, and I, know, I don't know how long this was scheduled because I don't have access to my calendar without a computer, um, but I, I have 40 minutes this morning. I hope okay. that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, any time that you have that you can fit in to, to meet with the students, I think is great. Um, it was only scheduled from 9 to 10 anyway, so 40 minutes will be the bulk of the time we had aside. Um, I, I thank you for the great. comments and the introduction. I think it's always fascinating to hear how people get into politics, and it's a little refreshing to hear stories about people who didn't just go to college to be a politician. Um, I think those are always great stories to hear about real people running for office and trying to help out. Um, Mr. Jones, again, thank you so much for being here. Is there uh, an introduction or anything you'd like to say before we start the questions? Well, I'll, I'll give a brief introduction. Um, certainly following in line, it is an absolute pleasure to be here. I look forward to talking with young people. And I would like for everyone to understand that each and every one of us has a story. Great stories. There's an ebb and flow on things are going positive in your life. Things may not be going as great as you want them to go. But what you can do is mitigate against it, do something about it, to put yourself in position so that each and every one of you guys could be the best versions of yourselves that you can be. I'm a 40-year career professional, corporate professional. I am not a politician, have never been a politician, and I'm, knocking, I'm not knocking anyone for being a politician, but I would certainly like to hold them accountable for doing a good job, just like all of your teachers want you to do a fantastic job because there are learnings that will impact you for the rest of your life so that you can be absolutely productive, not only for society, but to, for yourselves, to make yourselves feel proud of what you do and what you contribute. I feel it is duty bound upon me Andrew Jones, to participate in our system at an optimal level, particularly when you have skill sets that you think will be helpful in turning your city around. And again, that's a duty that I look forward to because if you look into my background real quick, I am a person that went to college, nothing wrong with college whatsoever, great learnings. I did get my and earn my bachelor's degree in business administration with a minor in economics from Lincoln University in here in Missouri. I also went to Washington University. I have an MBA from Washington University. I have also have an additional master's degree in international business. And I'm also working on a master's degree now in economics. So I am 60 years old, and but I continue to work hard improving my knowledge base. And I'm hoping that each and every one of you will continue to improve your knowledge base. But I also am a career professional working as an executive for an electric utility company. And I cherish my ability to be able to learn about executive opportunities, executive responsibilities and accountabilities. And when I look at the city that we all love, I look at it from the perspective that there, I am duty bound to do something about it if I don't particularly care for what I see is going on. And I think Mr. Pace talked about that being duty bound to some degree that you have to get involved when you see something isn't going the way you want to, you have a right to express it. And that's the reason I'm running for mayor for the city of St. Louis, because I want to have my input to try to help the city that we all love to move in a trajectory that we can all say it represents civic excellence. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Th those are wonderful comments. A uh, couple things. One, I can say that my heart goes out to anybody pursuing an education throughout their entire life. Continuing <laughs> to push yourself, I, Lord knows, I love that. And I appreciate the encouraging words of the students also. I think it's great for them to hear this. Um, with that, I'm, I would like to turn it over to the students. Uh, just so you both know, the students were the ones who researched and drafted the questions. They edited each other's work. Um, it is all polite, but I did tell the students that I would like them to ask questions that concern them. So these are coming from the students. To begin, uh, Maka Hussein, one of our wonderful students. Ms. Hussein, would you mind uh, starting with the opener? Yes, I don't mind. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. My name is, 
My name is Michael Hussain. I'd like to welcome you to our AP political science class. It's, it's an honor to have you with us today. And I was wondering if the citizens of St. Louis elect you as our mayor, what are the most important things you'd like to work on right away? Um, and since we were gonna alternate answering first and second, um, Mr. Jones, would you mind starting this question first? Fantastic question, Maka. I believe the number one thing that impacts the city of St. Louis, and it's not just my opinion, is associated with the crime that exists here in the city. Uh, we certainly can do something about it. There are ways to expeditiously eliminate the high crime element that exists within the city of St. Louis with proactive thinking, with actual thinking. And today you'll hear most of my theme is talking about what can we do to improve students in their capacity to think so we can solve problems because this is absolutely critical and the thinking capacity and process also and when it comes to solving problems of public issue, public safety and those types of issues, homicides and violent crime, it takes a proactive leader, someone who's well studied in those particular areas and will be objective in meeting out justice across the board for everyone to solve that most important problem that exists for the city of St. Louis and the residents here is the violent crime. And we can certainly get something done in that area. And we're gonna push forward for it because you deserve and all the rest of the students, as well as just the general population to have the best municipal services available. So every one of you will have opportunities to be the best versions of themselves that they can be. Right. Thank you for that answer. Um, Ms. Spencer? Absolutely. The number one issue, as Mr. Jones pointed out, is crime. We are the number one homicide city in the nation. Um, you know, and I don't know if you can see here, um, I'm not used to working with my phone, but, um, you know, I live in a challenged district in the south part of St. Louis City. I pick up bullet casings on my morning walks every day. And this is what I've collected since June, just in my morning walks in my neighborhood. Um, you know, we have a real crime epidemic and um, as the victim myself of a violent crime, having a gun put to my head really changed my life. But it ended the life of the young man behind the gun because he's now spending the rest of his life incarcerated. And I think it's important when we look at crime to look at both sides of violence and recognize that it's devastating families every single day. We had 262 people lose their lives and thousands more who were shot and were affected by that violence. So um, over the last year, I've been working with you know, uh, experts in the field of violence throughout the nation um, because the city of St. Louis is an anomaly really in the, in, in the United States and continuing to see violence increase. So working with those folks, I put together a 10-step plan that can comprehensively effectively start to address violence on day one if elected as mayor. I've got it outlined on my website. It really consists of three here, bringing programs that have worked in other cities, improving trust. If we can't heal the divide between our police and our community, we're not going to get anywhere. And really shoring up other city departments outside of our police department that promote public safety. So Maka, your question is, what is the most important and pressing issue? And it is violence. Great. Um, again, I think our students are probably <clears throat> glad to hear both of those. As we were doing the research, almost every student had a question that at some point touched upon public safety. So it's an issue that I know the kids are all thinking about, along with everybody else in St. Louis. Um, yes. Uh, Katie Berry, and would you like to ask your next question? All right. Good morning. My name is Katie Berry, and I was wondering, what do you need most from St. Louis citizens to help the city move forward? Well, um, Alderman Spencer, would you like to start Mr. first on this one? Yeah. And if you could let me in, I've got my, my computer's finally oh. running. It'd be a much better user experience for everyone involved if we could, <laughs> if I could switch. Absolutely. Okay, let's see here. I don't know how to get out of this. There we go. Although we are muted, but it looks like everything is up and running. Okay. We're getting there. Okay, I'm so thick. So the question really was. Um, it was uh, her question, interestingly, was flips to ask you, what do you think uh, we need most from the citizens of St. Louis to help the city move forward? What oh. would you like to see the citizens do? 
What a thoughtful question. And this is such an important one, especially as we consider ways in which we can get, you know, move the city forward and, and everybody has a role to play. I would say the most important thing that you all can do is provide guidance and give input, dig in and be invested in the things that your city is working for. Provide your input. We have hearings, for example, at the Board of Aldermen every week, um, and it's free uh, to, to attend. Um, and you can always communicate directly with your elected officials. Let them know what you think, what issues you see in your neighborhood that you want addressed, and the solutions you see, because the people that um, our, you know, every, folks that are living the uh, uh, everyday experience in our community are the uh, in our city are the best informed for how to fix the issue. So I would say um, those being involved and uh, letting the uh, city know what's going right and what's going wrong is the best thing that um, that you all can do. Great. It's an incredibly important role if our citizens can help drive solutions directly. Thank you, Mr. Jones. <clears throat> Katie, that was a fantastic question. And I sit before you on Zoom because I responded to the call, a call that I am a novice historian, probably know a lot of bit about history. And I refer to Aristotle. Aristotle suggests that a civilization is only as good as its people. And it, he also talks about, along with other great African griots, storytellers, Chinese storytellers, they all talk about the responsibility of the citizenry to be involved. And that goes from students to the oldest adult to be involved and look at it as a duty to absolutely provide expertise, information when necessary to help your particular community to move forward. And I, again, am the living example because I just came home every day from work. I would love today to be sitting down, eating some Ted Drews, watching television and enjoying myself. But I responded to the call of duty to say that if I didn't like what was going on within the city of St. Louis, I should do something about it. I have a particular unique set of skills. And just like what Ms. Spencer said, she wanted to get involved because of things that happened into her neighborhood. She feels committed to get involved. I also felt the need to get involved. And that's why I'm running for mayor, hoping to be the mayor so I can help turn the city around. And I know Carol wishes that she could be mayor as well. So she has plans to turn the city around. And both of us are trying to show that we are committed with our sense of duty to help the city of St. Louis. And we're looking for each and every one of you guys to help as well. I love that we have both of you here together because again, like I said, this is a great example of how politics can actually work and have real discussions without insulting each other. I, this is fantastic. Um, so Chuma Morgan had a question coming up about education in this city. You wanna go ahead, Chuma? Uh, good morning, my name is Chuma Morgan. And I would like to know, would you both please explain the sort of resources you would send into classrooms to create new opportunities and provide quality er education for kids here in the city? Um, and Mr. Jones, if you'd like to start this one. Great uh, question, Chuma. One thing that I've been involved with is economic development, community development, and business development. And I, pl I plan throughout developing an economic development and community development plan is to also ensure that there's improvements for development. We have to get young people the training, all of the education necessary that you guys can take on the job for the 21st century, which wouldn't be the old school way of looking at things in the traditional way, but you guys are more cutting edge. You understand what things are necessary and needed, but we also want to make sure that the St. Louis public schools are providing you with the optimum curriculum, the best teachers, the best infrastructure. And we can do that when you have an economic development plan, community development plan that is all inclusive, that it requires our prospects and our existing businesses to provide some level of funding and support so that we can bring in additional funds and supplement we can add to and to enhance your experience so that you can move forward in your own individual pursuits and your own happiness to change your trajectory. 
Uh, Ms. Spencer, any thoughts on how we can reform education here in the city? Sure. Um, education, is, as you all know, is such an important uh, piece of serving our citizens. If we don't, if we fail to properly give our uh, students, our kids, the tools they need to be successful, we're failing to invest in our future city and our um, future residents. So, um, uh, an education platform, which again, um, you know, I hate to point it to it again, but it is on my website if you wanted to learn more. But what I'll say here today is that the mayor doesn't control our, our St. Louis uh, schools, but the mayor plays an incredibly important role in how we direct funding to our schools. Our our schools, those decisions about the particulars are really uh, controlled by our elected school board, our superintendent. So if elected mayor, what I'll do, is I'm committed to working with those individuals, leaning into them and making sure that the tax incentives that the city is giving to big corporations to attract them isn't taking funding from our schools and making sure that the folks that are elected, the elected school board, and our superintendent who are driving those decisions, Shuma, uh, have the most amount of money that they can to best uh, provide resources for you all, uh, for our students to be educated. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, next, uh, Laura Wolf, we're gonna jump to you because we've had some connection issues with the student who was next in line. Um, so I'll let you introduce the question because it's well-written and I, you'll do a great job as always. All right, good morning, my name is Laura Wolf. Um, I had a question about policing. You've both spoken about policing in St. Louis in the past. Uh, could you please expand on how exactly you plan to build trust between the community and law enforcement? Um, and Alderwoman Spencer, you can go first this time. Sure. The breakdown in trust is so apparent, and I'm sorry to, couldn't hear how you pronounce your name, and it's so similar to mine, I don't want to get it wrong. Is it Lara or, or, or Lara? Lara. Lara, okay. And people call me Cara all the time, and so that's why, you know, it get, it's easy to confuse. So, um, you know, first and foremost, we need to recognize that there's a real breakdown in trust, and when witnesses and victims of violent crime don't trust our law enforcement agency, they don't share the vital information that we need to solve violence. It really is imperative that we heal this divide. First, we need to recognize that the city of St. Louis is number one in police-involved homicides. This is completely unacceptable. If elected mayor, I will reorient the use of force policy by putting a new policy in place that clearly articulates our commitment to the reverence of human life. Secondly, we will make the use of force investigations transparent. We'll participate in a database and make that information available to the general public. There has been, um, there has been a resistance on that at, to this point, but I, as, as elected mayor, I am committed to doing that. And I'm committed to hiring a chief equity officer within our police department to oversee policies, oversee hiring and oversee the promotions within our police department so that we have that lens through which we're looking as we move through this. Um, I'm also committed to hiring uh, social workers within our police department that can help communicate more effectively with our, with our community, especially in times of trauma. We do not always need a person with a gun responding to, it, to, to individuals who are experiencing traumatic violent, uh, uh, violence and it's much better served to sometimes have a social worker in, those, in that place. And lastly, getting the basics right. Right now, we're not even picking up the phone when our communities want to and need to engage with an emergency response system. That 911 that you call, 30% of those calls are being answered by your reporting. That is completely unacceptable and it really breaks down the trust within our community when you are having a heart attack or seeing somebody experiencing a drug overdose or in a car accident or having your home burglarized or witnessing violence, you need to be able to get a hold of 911. And if elected mayor, I'm committed to getting that right. Thank you. Mr. Jones? Laura, that was a fantastic question. That is a fantastic question. And each of you guys right now are on a journey, a journey to make decisions, to think comprehensively, to challenge notions 
that may not meet the muster when you utilize deductive and inductive reasoning. All of these things I'm sure you're learning in, in high school right now. And this is the way I'm speaking to you guys because it's absolutely important that we all get to a level where we all think and we are not afraid to have constructive criticism and analysis. When we talk about the police department here in St. Louis, we're talking about an aging department that is probably 99.0% effective at what they're doing. If we get 99% effectiveness with students on their, on their, on their uh, scores, things of that nature, we're hitting and we're making home runs. What I'm submitting to each and every one of you is that the police are doing a fantastic job with negative PR that exists. And if you don't have the proper leadership around your police officers, it would be almost like having the principal that doesn't govern and do what's necessary to move the students forward, to move the curriculum forward, things of that nature. We have to take into consideration that there may be some level of misnomer suggesting that the police aren't doing a fantastic job, particularly when you look into what the police are doing. When it comes to community policing, they are doing a phenomenal job. When it comes to the men and women in blue who are out here diligently trying to get their job done and following the rules, the guidelines, all of the things necessary so that we can have an optimal police force, they're doing it. They're getting the training. But one of the main things that we have to take into consideration, I submit this to each and every one of the students, you must challenge things. You must be a critical thinker. And what I am additionally suggesting is that the police are doing a great job. We must take that in consideration. But when you're looking at problems, a fish rots from the head down. That means leadership. You have to have leadership in order to ensure that we are getting the proper parameters taken care of so that each one of you can have the greatest experiences being students and as you mature into adults that you'll be able to operate at an effective level at that particular point as well. But again, I encourage each of you to investigate what is true, what isn't true relative to the police, and be advocates for what you know is absolutely necessary, and we will hold the people accountable. And that's certainly what I will do, hold each and every one of the people involved accountable, accountable. And that means equal justice across the board for everyone and no discrimination. And under leadership, you can solve those problems. Thank you both for those thank answers. And again, Thank you for being forthright in your answers. I think it, it benefits everybody when politicians are able to say what they believe and, and speak it clearly without trying to couch it in terms that sort of obfuscate what it is that they really want to say. So again, thank you both for being as honest and forthright as you are. Um, the next question is going to come from Ms. Barnes. Are you Ms. Barnes? No, we're, there we are. Makai, would you like to go next? Hello. First, I just want to say good morning and thank you both for being here today to speak with us. So I did a little research on Treasurer Jones, and she had plans to help students pay for community college for, here in St. Louis. But I'm curious about how the city will get the funding to allow free community college for two years. I was wondering, can both of you speak a little a bit on how you might help college more affordable? for high school students like me and others? Am I up? Uh, yes, Mr. Jones? Is it Micaiah? Yes. Micaiah, fantastic uh, question. Uh, to be very candid and forthright because young people need to have information that's very candid and forthright. And I don't beat around the bush, but I also understand the level of who I'm talking with. So I'm trying to give you information that can help you move forward. When you look at the monies available for college students, for potential college students, there are a myriad of opportunities out there. They have scholarships available for young people. If you are under a certain height, you can get a scholarship for it. It's now about doing the necessary research with your counselors, being embedded with your counselors, your teachers that really care about you. They can help you with all the funding necessary. There are a lot of philanthropic organizations out here Elemosinary concerns that are out here that are just 
thirsty to help you, Micaiah, and all the rest, from Laura to everyone else, to get scholarships to help you with funding, housing, so that you can be the best version of yourselves as you move forward into, into adulthood. So those monies, those support systems exist. They exist at a high level, and we can't ignore those. And the candid part is that a mayor can provide a supplemental role. And certainly I am a champion in talking earlier about economic development, making sure that we get buy-in from our uh, private partners to help with the when it comes, comes to workforce development and education to ensure that you get additional funding, helping with scholarships, and funding in that way is no problem, but I want you to also to understand that there throughout this whole metropolitan region, there are a lot of agencies and globally, there are a lot of agencies and domestically, a lot of agencies looking forward to help absolute great students like you guys are to get the funding so you can progress and matriculate through college. Thanks. Thanks. Alderman Spencer. Micaiah, this is such an important question. I know when I was in high school looking at going to college, it terrified me thinking about going into debt. Um, I was lucky at the time I got a Pell Grant, and that's a federal grant that uh, helps uh, students of low income be able to pay for the pay for college. Um, you know, the big funding is going to have to come from our federal government. And I am hopeful with uh, President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris that we are going to have some federal programs to help cover the big cost of going to college and, and make that debt um, a, a something that is reasonable for students. Here on the local level, what a mayor can do, um, and I can't really speak to Treasurer Jones's um, savings accounts. I know that she puts $50 into um, savings accounts for kids. Um, you know, I'll say that we need some really big funding to make sure that we're covering the, the cost of college. I'm excited that Washington University uh, announced uh, last year that any local student who can get into the university uh, whose family earns less than $75,000 a year can attend that university for free. And I'd like to, as mayor, use the bully pulpit to apply pressure to some of our other universities, including St. Louis University and Webster uh, and UMSL to adopt something more so that we can start to make going to school here locally attainable uh, and economically feasible for all of our students. The, um, the option of going to a community college um, for the first set of classes is something I took advantage of um, when I was living here, and it's certainly an economical one. And leaning into our St. Louis Community College community to provide uh, ways of being, you know, to, to do that during high school um, in an affordable way as mayor, I could, I would plan on using the bully pulpit to, to try and strong arm on some of our uh, higher institutions of higher learning to participate in, Micaiah. Um, I encourage you to, 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 to try to um, think about the most economical way you can start logging in some of those college course numbers um, while you're still in high school. It makes a big difference on the bottom line and the overall to go into school. I was really grateful to have done that. Okay. Thank you guys both for addressing an issue that I'm sure every student here who is a senior and is now three months away from graduating, uh, funding college is on their minds, I think for all of them. Um, the next question is gonna take us in a totally different direction, but equally important. Um, Ms. Freeman, are you here? Ariana? Hey, Ariana Freeman, can you hear me? Okay. If she can't hear me, we will try to come back to her later if she, reconnects. Um, Susan Walker, would you mind taking your question next? Hi, good morning. Um, I'm Susan Walker. And uh, my question is, do you plan to devote some of your time building the poor communities within the city? And also, how can you bring jobs to these neighborhoods? Um, Alderman Spencer, should you go first on this one? Susan, so the question really it kind of glitched a little bit for me is how we are going to rebuild neighbor, poor neighborhoods in the city and bring jobs to those communities. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. Okay. Um, so I, as I mentioned on the front end, I represent a really challenged district here in South St. Louis, the neighborhoods just south of Cherokee Street between Cherokee and Merrimack. 
um, down here on the south side, the state streets. And um, I've been help, uh, instrumental in helping turn these neighborhoods from, from ones that have seen decades of decline and we're now seeing investment in those neighborhoods. We have a lot of rehabbing going on and we're even building some new affordable housing uh, apartments in, in, in this community. I want to take that same approach where you're, where what we did down here is use affordable housing for blocks and then drive investment through neighborhoods that are otherwise pretty challenged to rehab some of the vacancies. <clears throat> um, as mayor, I'll take that same approach citywide. I used a, I put it in a program called Mo to Own. Uh, you may have heard about it. Um, what it does is it allows if you live next to a vacant city owned parcel, if you're willing to mow it, you can just have it for free. And that's helping to turn some of those vacant lots that just turn into wild prairies, giving them to the neighbors that live next to them so that they can have a new asset, grow their yard and not have to live next to a city owned prairie. Taking a, 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 a thinking outside the box approach to addressing vacancy is gonna be a key component to to try to building investment in neighborhoods that have seen large numbers of decline. But season you're Point about bringing jobs to those neighborhoods couldn't be more important because without jobs for folks to be able to plug into, they can't afford rent and they can't afford to buy a home and improve the neighborhoods themselves. So in order to drive uh, jobs to our city, we're going to have to be able to attract employers back to the city of St. Louis. And that means addressing violence. Employers around the world don't want to come to St. Louis when we have such an issue with violence. They're also looking at some of the other structural issues, structural racism, the division between our communities. So our next mayor has to tackle these issues head on to make our city a city that employers around the world will want to come to, set up shop and provide opportunities for our residents. Mr. Jones? Season, that is an outstanding question, just like all the others. Uh, you guys are getting down to the real crust of what really needs to be addressed, and I really enjoy this. And I'll continue to speak within the parameters of students moving forward, trying to learn. I have over 25 years of being an actual economic development practitioner, as well as community development and business development. If you go to some cities in Southern Illinois where I work out of, you'll see my name on their websites, their city websites in economic development and community development. And I know what's necessary and needed in order to turn places around. In St. Louis, we often talk about the Del Mar divide where we have people that live north of Del Mar who are not being put, involved, put in nor involved in the growth opportunities for the city of St. Louis. And that's a no-no because all a rising tide should raise all ships. So this, I'll go back season to what I mentioned earlier about an economic development plan, community development plan, and a business development plan. Within the crop constructs of those plans, you prepare for all of those contingencies that you're asking about. You worry about and you deal with your business acquisition, your business retention and you get buy-in. You deal with all of those prospects that want to come to the city of St. Louis, but you frame it all within the stakeholders, the key stakeholders here in St. Louis, and knowing exactly what it is that we want for those particular areas, almost designing what we want for the businesses that come here, and you also get people developed Right, by utilizing the workforce development plans that are here, if you go to Rankin, if you go to any of the apprentice programs for, some, for the unions, the junior college system, all of those things are available to help get people prepared for the jobs. And something I would like to submit, and your economics teacher could probably go into more detail on this, hopefully with you guys, is that we right now currently have a personnel challenge, not a jobs challenge. We have jobs that are available. We just have to have people prepared for the job season. And this is a real challenge, an absolute magnitude challenge that we have to, believe it or not, get people prepared to be able to come to work on time, to be dutiful in what they do, understanding what it is to be responsible and respective, and respectful to others. All of those things are necessary to be able to build up a community-based 
and an ecosystem that is sustainable for everyone who wants to participate. So I hope I didn't make it too complicated, but economic development plans and all the community development plans take care of all of that season. And those are the things that I will implement as soon as I get into office. But the number one job right now is to eliminate the homicides and violent crimes so we can implement all of those things to help you. Again, thank you for the answers. And it's, it's great that you actually pointed at the Del Mar divide. Um, the next question was about racial equity in St. Louis and specifically touching on the Del Mar divide. But that said, I know, Alderman Spencer, I know you told us that you are short on time today and it's 9.40. I wanna make sure that I'm being I, respectful. I, would, I could take one more question. Okay, um, uh, Gabe, are you there? Gabe DeGuire, can you hear me? Unmute yourself. Um, if he's not, I'll ask it for him because he really wanted to have this put out to the candidates. Um, so Gabe's question was specifically touching on what you were just mentioning, how St. Louis has, oh, maybe he's trying to log back in. Gabe, you there? I saw you leave and come back. Yeah, I'm back. My internet went down again. Okay, no worries. Uh, go ahead. Would you like to ask your question? Mm. Yes. Uh, first of all, I want to thank both of you for being here today. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, so as you are probably aware of, there's a sharp divide in the economic development between south of Del Mar and north of Del Mar. The Del Mar divide has long been a representation of the racial and economic split that has plagued St. Louis since its inception. What are the specific steps that you plan to take in order to work towards bridging that divide? And what role do you see yourself in when it comes to bringing racial equity to the city? Um, for the sake of time, would you mind if Alderwoman Spencer went first? Because I know she does oh, have to go. Uh, thank you, sir. No, no problem whatsoever. Sure. Gabe, this is a phenomenal question. Thank you so much for your thoughtfulness and asking. Um, and I, I, I join Mr. Jones in just really um, complimenting all of the questions here today. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed with the thoughtful approach that you've all taken. And, 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 and I'm grateful to be able to be with you this morning. Um, you know, I'll say, Gabe, that on the front end, you know, we, we are a hyper segregated city. And this is largely by design. You know, the city of St. Louis um, developed uh, what is called, what are racial covenants. And that is a process through which um, the city really segregated, racially speaking, um, our neighborhoods by requiring requiring that neighborhoods, own, you know, that people, that houses only be sold to people of the same race. This was something that was born here in the city of St. Louis by the city leaders at that time. And following that, the federal government came in and only offered FHA federally uh, home loans that uh, to neighborhoods that were homogeneous. So furthering that racial division. I say this to say uh, that because the city of St. Louis really started that process, the city has a responsibility to break that down. We started this and it is our job as a city government to acknowledge that and to fix it. So uh, in order to do that, we have to very purposely invest in those neighborhoods that have seen disinvestment. Our economic development plan, um, the way that we've been doing economic development and really driving investment, doing the rehab work, the rebuilding has really been reactionary. By that, I mean that we are driven by developers. The developers come to the city with a project that they want to do and the city decides yes or no. Do we give you incentive not, or do we not? Do we go with it or not? That's a reactionary form of economic development. If I'm elected mayor, I'm going to flip that on its head. And we're going to drive economic activity through a proactive form of economic development. What that means is that we're going to be issuing requests for proposals. Instead of answering to what developers want to do, we're going to put out what we want the developers to do. And the developers can either say yes or no. Instead of the city saying yes or no to whatever whims that our developer community wants to do, we're going to drive that. We're going to take a look at what is needed most and what our communities will support. That looks like grocery stores in neighborhoods that are food deserts. That looks like promoting and driving investment like 
uh, eat in diners and restaurants and things like that that are currently missing from many neighborhoods in the city of St. Louis, entertainment districts. It's unconscionable that many residents have to drive to out of town just to go out to eat or just to have options of, of different kinds of entertainment. So if elected mayor, we're going to drive that by, by, by really focusing and committing to making our neighborhoods um, uh, equal and more accessible to the things that our communities need and driving what uh, an investment as is directed by the residents themselves. Thank you. I hope that sort of answers that question. I sorry for the little history lesson, but it's really fascinating um, and horrifying to learn how we became the way we are and, and recognizing the city's direct role in that um, and how we got to where we are and, and understanding our role in fixing it. And in a moment of serendipity, you actually touched upon a question that we had to miss earlier about food deserts and access to healthy food in the city too. So it was a great twofer. Um, Great. I'm so sorry that I have to bug out a little bit early here this morning. Snow and I, I, you know, as a single mom, I'm having some uh, some family you know, some, some issues with that. I want to thank you all. Um, I, I particularly uh, am very impressed with the questions here. And um, and Mr. Jones, I'm sure I, I don't know where he went on my screen. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Um, I'm sure can handle it. Uh, we have been doing so many of these forums. It's a pleasure to be with you all this morning. And, and I thank you for, for being uh, flexible when my computer wasn't working and I uh, having all those sort of technical difficulties. Oh, so. Absolutely. And again, on behalf of, um, I'm sure I speak for Superintendent Kelvin Adams, who's here with us. I know my principal and the students. Thank you so much for making time to talk with the kids today. Um, they are, they are brilliant and hardworking kids. And I'm glad that um, you guys were here to uh, to see what the youth of St. Louis are up to and what they're thinking about. You all have some great leadership and some uh, great teachers here who were persistent. I apologize for some of the hiccups we had, <laughs> but the persistence and the resilience uh, involved in getting in getting me here personally today, um, I really, really, really appreciate the opportunity. Um, Dr. Adams has been a great advocate um, for our St. Louis Public Schools, and I just wanted to mention on, as I leave here that as mayor um, would be a partner with Dr. Adams and the elected school board in making sure that um, our St. Louis Public School kids are put first. That is wonderful. Thank you so much for being here again. Have um, a good have a good rest of your day all. Thank you, Kara. Be safe. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Bye. And Mr. Jones, I want to make sure I'm being respectful of your time also. I know we blocked out until 10 o'clock, so there's only about 10 minutes remaining. Um, do you have those 10 minutes to speak with the kids about a few more things before we go? I, I blocked off this time to talk to young people. This is important for us. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so Gabe's question is still on the table about what the mayor can do to help bridge sort of the racial equity gap. Um, I know you touched upon the Del Mar divide, which was, like I said, spot on on where this conversation was headed. Um, any thoughts on, on the racial equity component specifically? Um, well, and, and, and I did touch on it. Let me, let me make sure my mute is on. I, I did touch on it, but Gabe, every, Gabriel, every Every component part of doing anything and within the spirit of talking to young students, I'm trying to frame all of my answers so it would help you guys. I'm, I'm sure that you get assignments, you get planning uh, 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 assignments, things of that nature. And what you'll find out that all of these instruments, all of these tools, all of these assignments are vital to your next phase of adulthood in getting things done and solving problems. This is why I mentioned earlier about an economic development, community development, and business development plan. We're getting ready in school now to start developing plans and thinking. Because when you construct that economic development plan, Gabriel, you mitigate against any of the previous issues and challenges that may have existed and still may exist in some form, but you can absolutely do something about it because now you've planned on eliminating those problems and infusing the requirements for a remedy. We've solved the problems of equitable, inequitable treatment by having those plans, Gabriel. For season and everyone else who's been involved 
These things are absolutely necessary. This is why it's so critical that you pay attention in school, that you be involved, that you prepare yourself so that when you take on these tasks, not only in political uh, opportunities, but also in your private life, in your professional life, and in your personal life, you're forewarned and you're now forearmed with the information and all of the data necessary and the toolkit to move things forward to solve problems. I will solve the problem as the mayor of the city of St. Louis by infusing and making it mandatory that we have a comprehensive economic development plan and all the other subsequent, subsequent ones that are correlated with it so we can change the city and you just can't do it by just throwing things against the wall or just waking up late saying that, hey, we want to willy-nilly look at this and try to do something about it. It's all because you've developed the plan. This is what I've been successful with in my career. And believe me, I come from humble backgrounds. The more I age, the more I want to know. I'm hoping that fever and that, that type of stern commitment to academic and intellectual growth and, and stimulation hits each and every one of you guys so you all can be the best versions of yourselves that you can be. And Gabriel, it is about the economic development plan and leadership. When you have the proper leadership out front, you can eliminate all of those peripheral problems, no matter what the past is. And I can go in detail about what led us up to this point insincere leadership and things of that nature, benign neglect, malicious neglect, but we're here to start from zero to move us to the era where each and every one of you guys have an opportunity, no matter your makeup, your belief systems or anything, we want full participation of all of you guys to get on board so we can make this city the signing example of civic excellence that we need it to be. That was a wonderful answer. And again, I think I can speak for all the kids in this meeting and just in SLPS generally that the theme you keep coming back to about self-improvement, self-discipline, self-control, that a lot of the problems we talk about, the student themselves being part of the solution has got to be part of the conversation. So like I said, I, I love the theme that you're hitting and I'm sure that my students, all super hardworking kids, um, that probably resonates, right? That we all kind of have to be part of this. Uh, problem solving process. Uh, the next question, interestingly, actually touches on something that might be out of all of our control for the next couple of months. Um, Ms. Butler, can you hear me, Jasmine? Yes, good morning. Good morning, Jasmine. Good morning. Um, my question is since we are in a pandemic right now, how do you plan to keep residents safe during COVID? Well, one thing, uh, Jasmine, we will follow the guidelines that come down from the CDC. We certainly want to utilize the best practices that are, are available. But I think there's another component part to this, Jasmine, that's critical that we have to take into consideration, that we have to ensure that the other legs of, this, of the problem of the COVID is associated with not having businesses up and running, not having all the necessary tools to be able to deal with the problems of not having income coming in, the problems of students at this particular point in time find it very difficult not being able to be with their former, I mean, their fellow students and their associates. Those are all collective things and issues and challenges that we have to deal with. The restrictions and all of the mandates, we certainly want to follow those. We want to follow the science, so to speak, because everyone's saying that we have to follow the science. I have no problem about, about that and moving and embracing that so we can move forward. But we also have to take care of those other mitigating things that contribute that also impact negatively and we will be comprehensive. And I've used that word a couple of times, thorough and comprehensive in our approach to solving problems so that once you have this, and it's not a one size fit all, but you have a baseline on how to think you will be able to thoroughly deal with the problems associated with COVID so that we can move forward to get everyone engaged and minimize. And I think all of you guys, whoever, whoever, uh, uh, and I, I champion this, whoever wants to get into economics, one of the things that you'll learn in economics is that you want to do the least amount of harm, always the least amount of harm. And when you do conduct the least amount of harm, you get more things done. That's perfect. And I appreciate the shout out because all of March and part of April, we'll be discussing economics right after this year. Um, 
Uh, we are short on time, so I'm going to jump to Ms. Burgess. Are you here? We'll see if we can fit in one or two more questions. There's a few more students who would like to ask something. Uh, I'll Erica. keep it short. I'll keep it short. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Erica. Um, my question is, what do you think are the best elements and assets of St. Louis that the city can build on going forward? Phenomenal question, Erica. I'll give you this. St. Louis has fun great infrastructure. It has great bones as a city. The city of St. Louis has all the intermodal opportunities that other cities, unfortunately for them, but great for us, that we have. We have the airways, we have the highways, we have the railways, and we have the waterways. Most people don't even know that we have a port system with boats and, and, and ferreting uh, up and down the river, all types of goods and things of that nature. We have everything that's necessary, real great distribution hub. We have phenomenal universities across the board that we can all take advantage of. We have great trade schools. We have all the anchor institutions necessary in order for St. Louis to bounce back. Now it's about leadership, Erica. Leadership gets us back to where we need to be. We often hear people talk about leadership and it's not well defined. And I'll just give you a real short one so we can move on to the next one. We do have managers. Managers, I would submit to each and every one of you guys, make sure we do things right. But a leader, make sure that we do the right things. And with leadership and the baseline bones that we have here in the city, Erica, we can move forward and it won't be a problem whatsoever. Right. It's nice to have a, a positive and sort of an optimistic tone as we come to the conclusion of this. Um, Jaden, Jaden Hodges, are you there? We're gonna come to you next. Yes. Great. Uh, would you like to ask that question near the bottom? That you, uh... Uh, good morning, my name is Jaden and I have to ask, when people talk about St. Louis now, they usually think of crime. Where do you, where do you see our city in 10 years if you are elected? What reputation do you hope for our city will have? Fantastic uh, question, Jaden. But I will shorten that timeline in 10 years. In 10 years, we're looking at a city that will be prosperous. We're looking at a city that will have equity across the board in meeting out justice no discriminations, we will be moving forward. Greatest opportunity to be the best versions of themselves, but the main problem of the violent crime associated with the city of St. Louis, I'm submitting that we can do this purposefully within the next year or so. We know who the criminals are who are conducting themselves in this particular manner. We just have to allow the police to get out and get those criminals off the street so that we can bring in all of the things necessary to move to the area that Erica talked about and all the others. Gabriel, when you talk about equity across the board, I say a rising tide lifts all ships. And when you have the proper leadership following the simple definition that I just gave you, all things are possible. So 10 years from now, and my mantra and my theme for my campaign is that we are striving for excellence. St. Louis, striving for excellence. And once we get to that point where we become the shining beacon of light, we will now be the guidepost for all other cities to look to St. Louis to say, that is what we need to do. We need to mimic St. Louis. And therefore, the black eye of the violent crime, the black eye of all the negatives will soon be dispatched, gotten rid of, and we will be the shining light of excellence. Right. Mr. Jones, thank you again so much for making time to talk with us today. I know in the middle of campaign season, it has got to be hectic in addition to all the other things in your life, the education, the work, and campaigning. So it is 10 o'clock. Uh, I will free Can you. I say one closing? Oh, Can absolutely. I say one closing thing? Please, I would, I, we would love to hear it. One thing for all the students, because I want to complete that question. Just, just in closing, this is not about me running for mayor. This is about me trying to impart some wisdom to young people. I've worked with young people all my life, volunteered. I've coached at Cardinal Ritter, CBC, uh, Sumner High School, East St. Louis Senior High School. I I've done it all. And I've worked with beautiful young people who've gone on to do great things. But all of them, when they leave my level of instruction, because I'm a teacher, if you're a coach, you are a teacher. One thing I impart on them is that 
the job one is for you to look out for your own best interests. Take heed to the people around you who are trying to give you good information, think through it, maximize what you hear, apply it, work hard, be diligent, hold yourself accountable, and you will find that the world will open up for you and you'll have all the bounties and riches right there to take advantage of. That is sage advice, Mr. Jones, thank you. Um, I said, we will let you go. It is past the 10 o'clock hour and my students have another class here starting in just a few minutes. Um, thank so again, you guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Take care. Good luck.